welcome to this episode of Al's Garage. We're continuing work on our 1943 Willie's MB project, and we will be tackling uh, the second part of our uh, two-part series with wiring on this vehicle. First part you saw, uh, and I'll link it to the description uh, in the description below, is some of our essential wiring. I call that, uh, you know, getting our ignition switch in and, and connected and working, uh, hooking up to our coil and, and, you know, battery and things like that. Uh, whereas this is more non-essential, headlights, taillights, even though you need them to go down the road, uh, this is going to tackle some of those type of uh, lights. Essentially, uh, our um, our uh, license plate light, our dash lights, things like that. Turn signals, uh, this vehicle has turn signals. So uh, we, uh, and as I mentioned on our previous video, this is not any cloth wrapped wiring on this vehicle. This is uh, uh, essentially, you know, doing what we can to get it working. Uh, it, it just has your kind of standard uh, a le a plastic wrapped wiring. So uh, we'll be tackling that and we're gonna start by working on our taillights. Whoa! Is that going to be fun? Yeah. Yeah. You want to work on the taillights? Yeah. There you go. So for our taillight installation, I have an additional piece of wire I put on here and soldered. Uh, I had to do this because the original taillight wiring had these guys coming out of it, which was great, but I couldn't get the housing out of the hole uh, because of the, or, or, you know, through the hole because of these guys, these little um, plugs. So cut them off, didn't have enough room to um, solder and put my heat shrink on. So I just added a little red and black wire, no big deal. Um, so now I'm gonna throw my uh, heat shrink on and uh, go from there.
All right, my headlights and turn signals, AKA uh, blackout lights, are essentially installed. And I want to test some of the wires that are up here uh, just to make sure I have them marked appropriately. Uh, I'm starting at the you know destination, the lights, and working my way back through this wiring harness um, so that I can get to where the headlight switch is. I'm going to put a new headlight switch in this vehicle, so uh, I want to know which ones to connect where. When you're doing a vehicle, it's pretty simple, especially with a very simple vehicle like this. You've only got a couple of lines going back. You've got low beam, which runs to both, uh, high beam, which runs to both on your headlights, and then you've got uh, your marker lights, which are both, that's one, so it's only three, and then turn signals left and right, so there should be only five wires, uh, obviously, you know, there's junction points, but sh there should only be five wires going back that, uh, um, you know, deal with everything. And I'm trying to think here, marker, your marker lights and your um, headlights could potentially be the same. Some vehicles have you pull the switch out <clears throat> one, one notch and it's only the marker lights, and then you pull it out and it's the headlights. So you could wire it in such a way where you could have the headlights and the market lights come on at the same time. Um, so what I want to do is just test and see where everything's at. Um, so I'm going to throw the camera over there and you know, you'll see the headlights go on and off and the market lights go off while I uh, figure it out. So let's do it. <laughs> Alright, so I've been tinkering with this for a while and there's a grounding problem with this, I'm going to call it turn signal unit. These originally were blackout lights, but this has been modified, the previous owner has modified this, uh, this is just kind of a standard canned, um, you know, uh, low beam, high beam, like tail light type 
housing that has been put in here. Uh, and then this wire has been either soldered or something to the, the side is kind of the ground. What I'm gonna try to do, and essentially that's where the problem is. For some reason this connection is not uh, um, making the ground appropriately. So I'm gonna run a, a little bit of solder on the end here to try to melt uh, a little solder in between here and this housing. Hopefully that works. Uh, if not, I'll have to figure out a way to, you know, um, fasten this wire to the housing here. You might actually be able to get away with it with a little clamp or something. But uh, either way, I'm gonna try that and that should fix it. I tested ground on the grill and it works. I tested ground on this fender and that works, which is good uh, because as uh, I wanted to find out and make sure that my fender was grounded to my grill because I'm gonna use ground on my fender for my voltage regulator. So that, you know, kind of solves that answer and that mystery. Um, so I'm gonna try to run a little solder here. Let's do it.
So another part of this electrical job is putting in a new light switch. Here is the switch I'll be using. It's something that would go in like CJ2A or CJ3A. It wouldn't go in this MB which has provisions for the blackout lights and things like that. That's a specific headlight switch for these types of vehicles which we won't be using just because the nature of this job it's you know done like a, a driver jeep so um, i haven't wired one of these up but it's pretty straightforward to figure out uh, the light switch pulls out two different times one two and on the switch you can see there is the power which comes in the back uh, and then there's two channels there's essentially when you pull the first switch out you can have uh, one circuit that's only on, uh, am I looking at it right? Oh, this one here. Only on when the uh, first le uh, uh, lever or first you know, part of it is pulled out. Um, and then this one on this side is only pulled out when the second one is pulled out. Like that would be your headlights. Uh, but your, um, you know, your tail lights might go under like this one that has both uh, tabs. You can see these little uh, uh, rivet things. So that would be your taillights and taillights on when your headlights are on. So actually pretty easy to figure out. Uh, I'm gonna dive under here and um, get this going. So here we are ready to tackle the turn signals. The first thing I did is I replaced the flasher unit. Now on flash units, again, I, this one, it just seemed old. Nothing was working. So I put a new one in. Uh, these three prong units, there's an X, which on the three prong units is where your power comes in. There's an L that is your output that goes to your switch, to your bulbs. Now these, three prong units, which makes them different from two prong, is that they have a third one that goes to like a little bulb on the actual turn signal housing. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, that's where I kind of wired these. Uh, I have a diagram. I found the type of flasher unit, turn signal unit this is. Uh, after hooking that up, essentially red for the input, black for the output, blue for the you know steering column indicator bulb. Uh, I got it working. I was expecting this to be a lot more challenging than it was. Nice to have something easy for a change.
I'm so excited we got all of our wiring stuff done here. It's nice when wiring isn't a big pain in the butt. Sometimes it is, and here it was just a matter of hooking up a few of these things and you know running a few lines where we needed to. So happy that this is done. We are so close. Stay tuned for the last couple of videos regarding this project. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.